Welcome everybody to episode four of the More Fab Tig series. So let's start off by saying that if you haven't watched the first three episodes of the TIG series, then this episode, if you skipped ahead to it, uh, you might be missing some pretty critical information. So why don't you go back and check out videos one through three and uh, get yourself up to speed before we start today's video. Now, in today's video, probably going to be a little bit longer than the past couple have been just because I want to go over a lot with you guys today. So today we're going to be striking our first arc. So we have our little digital calipers here so that we can measure our metal thickness and properly set our amperage. We have a couple just small pieces of roughly 3 16 metal. Um, so it's probably going to be about 185 to 200 thousandths thick. Maybe. I don't know. Let's check it. So we are running at 130 thousandths. My fault. So this is 130 on that end. It's probably, yeah, about 125 thousandths. So if you guys could see that, that is what we're working with right there. 124, 124 and a half thou. So we are going to be welding on that metal. We are also going to be showing you guys how to feed rod. So this is actually going to be quite a long video because I'm going to be teaching you how to manipulate your amperage with your foot pedal what your foot pedal actually does, how to control your puddle, how to generate an arc, where to keep your torch, a whole bunch of stuff. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here. We're going to make sure that our gas is turned on and that we've actually got gas, which we're running low, but it's okay. We got another tank sitting lurking behind there. Then we are going to turn on our machine. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the machine. And then if you guys remember in the past videos, we have our presets on our machine here. You're going to have to excuse the noise because the water cooler is super loud. So we're going to go to preset two, which we know is DC. So we're welding mild steel. We know that our metal is 125 thousandths. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ramp this up to about 130, 135-ish. And like I said in the past video, we always go a little bit over so that you just have a little bit of leeway in case you get into an area where you need a little bit more heat than you have it. So now that we have that all set up, we have our torch set up with our basic ceramic cup. I think this is a number seven. We're going to set our gas level. So again, we can just hit the, the purge gas button. We could set this, we don't need that much. We set this down to about 20 CFH or so, because we are running a gas lens, so a little bit more is good. And then we're gonna shut this down. Okay, so now what we're gonna be doing with this is, we're going to show you what the foot pedal does. Now, if you look in one of these corners here, I'll put the video, but we've got our foot pedal sitting right on the floor here. And what we're going to do is basically grab our torch. And we're just going to hold it so that it's not in the way of anything. But what I want you to know is that at this position of the foot pedal, there is zero amperage. Nothing is on. When you push the foot pedal down, you'll hear something interesting. You're going to hear the gas begin to flow. Now on our machine, we have it set up to do a half a second of pre-flow. So the argon will start to flow and then the arc will commence shortly thereafter so when we push the pedal down just a little bit it just initializes our argon flow 
and initializes the high frequency arc, arc start. And you'll see that when we actually start welding on the metal. Now the beauty of the foot pedal is we have zero amps all the way up to 135 amps and then back again and everything in between. So the way our machine is set up now, when we go here, we're at zero, we got our arc started. You can hear the machine buzzing. That's the high frequency trying to start, but I'm holding the torch away from me so I don't zap myself. And then we can push it all the way down for 135 amps, and then we can have anything in between. So now that we know what the foot pedal does and how to operate it, we can now move back to the table and actually get an arc started. All right, so now that we have an understanding of how the pedal works, and there you go, you can hear it trying to start. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you, this is always fun, but don't do this because it can actually damage your machine. I wanna show you how the high frequency works when it goes to start your arc, because old school TIG used to have to actually touch the metal and scratch it to get the arc started. You had to make physical contact with your tungsten, which you always run the risk of contaminating your tungsten and creating tungsten infusion in your metal, whatever you're welding. With high frequency start, it generates almost like a little lightning bolt that the, the high current arc can travel over and eventually to your part. So what I'll do is I'll show you guys just a quick little demonstration of that high frequency stuff. All right, so you guys can see that, you know what, as the high frequency arc is hitting metal, we're about an inch, inch and a half away from it and we're still able to kind of force a high current arc to jump over top of that low current high frequency start. Now, like I said, don't do that on your machine because there is a spark gap inside of most of these machines and you can damage the spark gap inside and have to readjust in a bunch of other stuff. So this is what it would look like normally when you have the correct torch height. See here, just a little snap, and then the arc starts. And you can see we're using such low amperage here that we haven't even really done anything to the metal yet. So now, what we're gonna do is go change the GoPro battery so we can start kind of, uh, you know, plunking in some arcs here and uh, kind of melting this metal a little bit to show you how to control the puddle and how to control the heat. All right, so I wish I could get you guys some better arc shots, but unfortunately, GoPros and welding don't really work well. If you put a, a mask over the GoPro, it doesn't do real well in low light, so it's kind of grainy and kind of nasty. I gotta figure out a better way to film arc shots. So for all you guys that are out there that may be watching this video that film your welding, kind of give me an idea of what you're doing to film arc shots because uh, I'd really appreciate it. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna light up on this piece of metal. And what we wanna do is we wanna just start to melt it. So we're going to operate the foot pedal, which you can see right here. We're going to operate the foot pedal and we're going to attempt to melt this metal. So we're going to give our pedal some throttle and keep improving, improving, improving on the, on the pedal position until we reach a position where the metal actually becomes molten. Once that metal becomes molten, then we can kind of figure out where we're going to go. So we're going to start with the torch roughly a sixteenth of an inch above the workpiece. And that's what makes TIG welding a little bit difficult is the proximity that you need to have with your arc to the actual workpiece. So we're gonna start with an arc, just enough to melt the metal, and you guys can watch on my foot and see how far I'm actually pushing this pedal down to initiate this puddle. All right, so with the pedal about halfway down, you can kind of see that we started to melt the metal a little bit and we started putting some heat through the metal itself. So now with that being said, at that heat range, we know we can melt the metal. Now we're gonna take our wire and at that same heat range, we're actually going to try to add some wire into it 
and see how that goes. So let's start this again. What we're going to do is again, we're going to light up on it. We're going to wait till the metal is molten and then we're going to try to stick our rod in there. All right, so we now have a problem. As soon as we stuck that rod in there, that puddle cooled off to the point where now the rod is stuck. So now we know we need a little bit more heat. A little bit more heat will stop the puddle from completely solidifying once you've stuck the rod in it. So it's not enough to have enough heat just to melt the metal. You need to take into compensation the actual filler rod that you're using and how much extra heat you're gonna need in order to get that filler rod to melt in there. So we're gonna do this again. Keep your eye on the pedal and see where we go with this. All right, so as you guys saw, we were full pedal on that. That was a full 135 amps, and you can see the heat affected zone is pretty significant. We've got a very wide bead, and the backside has some decent penetration. Now, the problem with this is you can see that super dark gray color. I was having to move so quickly at 135 amps that the argon didn't have enough time to shield the metal as it was cooling. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run another bead in front of that at about three quarter pedal, which would be right around 120, 125 amps, which remember this metal is 125,000 stick. So let's see how we do there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the pedal full bore, get the arc started, get the puddle started, and then back off just a hair to get to my desired level. All right, guys, so that bead there, much thinner, much more controlled, much more uniform, not as wide, didn't sink the metal as much. The heat affected zone, though, is about the same, which is to be expected because we're only about 10 amps off. But we had a lot more control with this bead than we did with the other bead. So now let's take this and we'll just kind of, eh, I don't know, maybe we'll use a different piece. Yeah, we'll use this piece. A lot nicer looking what I want to do now is show you guys a little bit of something about feeding the rod so I'm gonna kind of bring the camera in a little bit closer and what you want to do is you basically want to have your rod 90 degrees to your tungsten so as you move you want to kind of move with it however with your torch angle you don't ever want to be more than about 10 or 15 degrees off because if you move it this far your argon is actually going to blow your arc forward and you don't want that if you're too up and down you can't see what you're doing and you can't get your wire in like this so bringing everything on about a 10 or 15 degree angle 20 degrees max you'll be able to see your tungsten you'll be able to see your filler rod and you'll be able to actually kind of concentrate on what you're doing now what you want to do is start your arc get your molten puddle going Make sure you have enough heat, give it a dab. If the dab goes in there nice and smooth and the rod doesn't melt off and it doesn't get stuck and everything else, then you're probably right in the correct vicinity. From that point, you're gonna dab, move, dab, move, dab, move, and so on. Or you can move consistently and just go dab, 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 dab. It kind of depends on your style and your project that you're working on, there's no right and wrong way to do it. But what we're gonna do is literally light the arc, add some rod, make sure our heat's good, 
and then we're going to just dab and move and dab and move because until you get the coordination down you're using your foot to control the amperage you're using this hand to move the torch this hand to feed the wire and if you're doing all three of them at the same time it's confusing at first i'm not hand eye coordinated or hand foot coordinated i should say so playing drums for me is impossible however for some reason i can do this so we are going to do our dab and move versus continuous movement with dabbing you know inside of it and uh, we'll see how that goes All right guys, so you saw a perfect example of me playing with the heat and trying to figure out what was gonna be good by my first couple of dabs. Now, as you saw, I'm sure, is when I got right about here, it actually pulled the metal a little bit because my filler rod stuck in the puddle, which means I didn't have enough heat. So I wanted to generate a little bit more heat so that I could keep it moving. Now you'll notice too that the heat affected zone on this is massive. And that's not always a good thing. That's not going to be good. You want to try to keep this heat affected zone, you know, pretty snug. But we're also using a very small piece of metal that doesn't absorb heat very well or absorbs heat too much. So we're just going to be a little bit careful with that. So now we're going to do a continuous dab. And then I'll show you guys how I feed wire. All right, so that was just me moving continuously and dabbing the wire in and moving relatively quickly. Now you can see that this bead actually looks a lot better than this bead did as we are stopping and going and stopping and going because a lot of times you just end up introducing too much heat into the part that you're working on. So the way that I feed rod, and again, guys, this is, this is a long one, so bear with me here. There are several different ways you can feed rod, and I know I've gone over this before in my videos, but we're going to go over it again. Way number one is you can literally just hold on to the rod like a pencil and just push it in. But what happens with that is every time you push it in, it gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And you may have to stop your weld to reposition your hand to move your filler rod in. Now, when you're first starting out, that is the best way for you to feed in filler rod so that you can get a feel for it, is to literally push it in, push it in, push it in without moving the rod in your hand. Now, as things start to go along, you're gonna to start to realize that if you're welding 12 inches, you're going to need every bit of this rod. So you're going to need a way to move and feed the rod in place. So what I do is I hold it between my index finger and my middle finger, and then at the back in my thumb, right in the crotch of my thumb right here. And what I do is I just stretch my hand out and pull the wire through and just keep doing that. And if you practice this, often like i used to do i used to take a piece of rod home with me and actually practice doing that if you practice trying to hit a target while you're moving that rod you will get immensely better because the last thing you want is to be doing this while you're welding and smacking this into everything but where it needs to be which is in the puddle so take this and practice because you'll eventually be able to hit whatever target you want to hit over and over again so i can hit you know whichever finger i want to hit i can hit my thumb you can hit the puddle you'll be good to go so that's how i feed rock okie dokie so now that we showed you how to feed rod because rod was hungry apparently now that we've shown you how to feed rod how to start a puddle how to introduce the filler rod into your puddle what we're going to do is a very simple butt weld on these these two pieces of metal why we're starting with a butt weld versus a fillet weld versus a lap weld versus whatever is because this is mainly what a lot of guys in my industry do 
So if you're welding exhaust tubing, if you're welding, you know, making an exhaust manifold, you're going to be doing pretty much nothing but butt welds. It's not going to be lap welds because two pieces of pipe are going to fit together end to end and you're going to have to do a butt weld all the way around it. So we're going to start with this weld. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to tack it at one end and tack it at the other end. Now this is where it's going to get a little bit hairy because if you start tacking on the very corner, you're going to blow the corner away. So what I like to do is I like to tack inboard just a little bit and then when I start my weld, I start back in front of the tack and I move backwards and then move forwards again. And that just helps with not blowing the corners away. So let's get these two pieces tacked together. All right, so we got the two pieces tacked together. Now we're literally gonna start, because there's no stress on this, we're gonna start back on the tack. We're gonna back up a little bit while we're adding rod, and then we're gonna come across this entire thing and get it welded. All right, guys, so there is your typical butt weld. Right there. That's what it looks like. And it's getting really, really hot, so take a good look. But now, one last thing that I want to show you. Yeah, so I told you it was hot. One of the things that I want to show you is, I don't know if you saw on the foot cam, but I welded that a little cold. And the reason I did it cold was for a couple of things. One, I wanted to show you what happens when you weld cold. And two, I wanted to just kind of not blow these corners away and show you how to kind of do that. So what we're going to be looking at is the back side of this particular thing. And let me find something to hold this with because it is a really hot. So if you could see on the back side of this piece, there is zero penetration. So that weld did not make it all the way through. Now that, in some cases, is okay. In most cases, it's not. You're going to want to make sure you're using enough heat to blast all the way through the metal. And here's a perfect example. So when we welded this corner, this joint right here, you can see that the weld actually penetrated straight through. And that's what you're going to be looking for when you do one of these welds. So now, we're going to flip this over because we have access to it, and we're going to weld the other side. So let's get that done. Now guys, this is all about taking your time and practice. This is going to take a while for you to get down perfectly. We're going to weigh that down a little bit. This is going to take you a lot of time to get this down perfectly and get all of your starting points done and your propping points understood and getting comfortable and everything else. So it's going to take some practice. And so now you'll notice I back off the heat when I get to the corner just so I don't blow the corner away and then I shove a little extra rod in there just so I don't blow the corner away. And then I get a lot of comments that why do you leave the torch over top of the material after you're done welding it? 
Well, one of the things that uh, that happens is you want to make sure that your weld is shielded, especially while the metal is cooling down. So if you'll hear, when the gas starts, it runs for about 10 seconds, I think, which is what I have my post flow set to, and then it'll cut out. See? So what that does is it'll help shield your weld while the metal is cooling off. So now we have one side welded and the other side welded and it is good to go. So now we're gonna shut all this stuff off so that you can actually hear me better and uh, we'll get into some afterthoughts, some final thoughts. So now that we can talk at a normal volume because the machine is not blaring in our ears, I know that this episode had a ton of information in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna summarize real quick. What this episode was designed to do for you guys is to get you lit up on a piece of metal and get you playing around. Now, we haven't gone over puddle control. We haven't gone over any of that stuff, but I wanted to get you guys in this episode to light up on a piece of metal and actually start moving with it. And what we did, you'll see, step one was we turned the machine on, got the gas set up, got everything set up. Then we took our digital calipers, we measured the thickness of our metal, which is 125 thousandths. We set the machine to 135 thousandths to give us a little extra leeway in case we have a giant heat sink like this metal table or a chunk of aluminum or whatever's holding your material down is gonna absorb some of that heat. So you might need a little bit of over amperage and you'll have that in your pedal. We showed you how the pedal actually controls your amperage. We showed you how initially when you step on the pedal, it is only initiating the gas flow and the high frequency start on the arc. Excuse me, and you're at a bare minimum when it comes to amperage and then as you push the pedal down your amperage increases excuse me your heat input increases and you start to melt the metal you we also showed you that with too little heat your filler rod can get stuck to the metal too much heat and you have a heat affected zone that is ridiculous and you start burning through the metal and we also showed you a couple of techniques to start adding filler rod into your weld now this is very basic and again, it's a lot of information. However, getting you to start welding right now so that you get a feel for it and you can kind of start to get the coordination that you need to be able to use your right or left foot for the pedal, your right or left hand for the torch, and your right or left hand for the filler rod is going to be key here because that is a big hurdle that you're going to need to overcome. And for me, I can honestly tell you that being uncoordinated when it comes to coordinating my legs with my arms has always been a huge problem of mine. Like, you know, I tried skateboarding, I couldn't do it. I tried, you know, anything that involved me having to do two different things with my hands and my feet, forget it. So it took me a while to get that rhythm down to where I could m constantly manipulate that pedal while moving the torch in various directions and adding filler rod at the same time. So the more that you guys can practice that, the better off you're going to be. And you can practice it in several ways. I mean, I used to practice in my car. I would practice in my car, driving it, you know, cause it's a six speed manual. I would feather on and off the throttle while I was manipulating the clutch, while I was shifting and steering. So if you think of it like that, if you can drive a manual shift car, then you do have the potential to do this really well. It just might, your brain needs to wrap its itself around exactly what it is you're trying to do because you know driving a manual car for some of us is second nature you jump in and you just do it and eventually you'll get like that with welding but you just have to practice that so with all that being said with me having talked your ears off today grab your welder turn it on grab a piece of metal measure it up set your amperage strike an arc and get yourself welding Start practicing, practicing, practicing. And for those of you who do have welders and have already started welding, if you're having issues with it, please ask questions down below in the comments section. I will answer them for sure. In this series, we are not only going to be just me teaching you, but I want you guys to give me feedback. Are you having trouble with something? Is there something specific that you need help with? Or is there something specifically, maybe you're a seasoned welder and you've been doing it for 20 years and you have some tips for me, I would be more than happy to accept tips from a seasoned welder. 
So with that being said, leave everything down in the comment section. Let me know what you thought of this video. And please, guys, strike an arc. Just do it. Ah, oh, God, I felt like, what's his face? Do it! But, yeah, just strike your arc, get started, grab yourself a bunch of scrap metal that's laying around, and just start playing around. Your technique will build itself. Your method will build itself. Your skill will build with practice. So, get it done. And you know what? Stay tuned for episode five. We're going to get into a little bit more of puddle control. We're going to get into heat control. We're going to get into a bunch of other things in the next episode that will help you along. And also, too, all of your questions and comments down below, as they come in, I will address them in the next episode. So, again, feel free to ask your comments, ask your questions, whatever it may be. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate all of you. I hope you're enjoying this series. I'm enjoying making it. And I will see you in episode five. So have a good night, everybody.